Why prophecy? Many people have used what is written in Hebrews 1, verses 1 through 2, to justify why prophecy, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, at least in 1 Corinthians 12, are not needed today, simply because we have the scriptures. But something happened to me this morning, and I was like, this is why we need prophecy. This is why we need the gift of prophecy. Sometimes we try to divorce the Spirit of God from the Word of God. John wrote that there are three who bear record in heaven, or witness. The Father, the Word, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, all three are one. But sometimes we try dividing the Word from the Spirit of God. There's a place for both. Why prophecy? Something came up and I needed an answer. And I've been through the Bible many times. And if I've seen it, it hadn't jumped out at me, so to speak. What I could really use is a revelation from the Lord regarding what is going on and even more importantly how to end it so there's some people they're like we don't need prophecy because we have the scriptures but look throughout the scriptures how many times even though there were scriptures at a point in time where people for example still went to a prophet when Saul, the son of Kish, was looking for his father's donkeys, he didn't search the scriptures. He went to find a man of God, who was Samuel the seer. And by God's divine providence, he let Samuel the seer know what was going on with Saul's father's donkeys. But more importantly, he was Samuel to anoint Saul is Israel's first king. That was something that wasn't found in the scriptures. It was a direct revelation from the Lord. In the law of Moses, it wasn't simply a, in an oral tradition. It was written. That is why Moses, before his passing, could have those things read to the people. Likewise, Joshua could read the law to the people. Ezra during the time of Nehemiah, they read the scriptures to the people. So what has happened? Why so many people today, Christians, are saying we don't need prophecy? I argue that we do. So again, without going to specifics, if the Lord wants to reveal it to you, He will. He can. Now that He needs my permission. Something happened to me today that prompted this message. And it's like, yes, it is important to have prophecy. Jesus, the Word of God made flesh. He told people that they searched the scriptures and the scriptures testified of him. And there was no language barrier for them. So the scriptures are written in, um, in Hebrew. They spoke Hebrew. Anything in Aramaic, people spoke Aramaic, Greek, so there was no language barrier. But people searched the scriptures that testified of Jesus, but couldn't recognize him. But then you had John the Baptist, who told those who studied the scriptures, that there is one among you who the latchet of his shoes are not worthy to loose. It wasn't that John was searching the scriptures or that he was studying the scriptures know that. It was by divine revelation of the Lord. And then G John saw Jesus and recognized him as a Messiah that he was expecting. That many Jews throughout the ages had been expecting. It didn't happen because he was studying the scriptures. And this is not to place the Spirit of God over the Word of God or the Word of God over the Spirit of God. 
Again, there are three who bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. All three are one. As should we, as Christians, be. All three are one. So John, by divine providence, could identify Jesus as the Messiah. Not because he was looking at scriptures and be like, oh, this matches the Messiah. But he was told by the Father that the one when he baptized, when he saw the Spirit of God descending upon him in a form of a dove, that was one of the signs that this would be the Messiah. Peter, in Matthew 16, Jesus was asking, who do people say I am? There are all kinds of things going out. And they sound scriptural. Oh, Elijah, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Then the Lord asked, Who do you say I am? And Peter said that he was the, the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said the Father in heaven had revealed it to him. It wasn't because he was searching the scriptures. The Father in heaven revealed it to him. And there are things today that we need a revelation from God regarding what it is or what we should do. Like the sons of Issachar, who knew the signs of the times and advised Israel what they should do. Those things have not lost their place. Divine revelation from the Lord have not lost their place. For example, in searching the scriptures, we can look at Jesus with the way he healed blind eyes. It shows a myriad of ways. Making a spill with clay, put over a man's eyes, go wash in a pool. That was one way, but he didn't always do it that way. So when a person is searching scriptures regarding something that applies to their life, how are they going to know what the Lord wants to do? Also think about um, 1 Samuel 16. And by the way, as I'm giving this message, there's a lot of scriptural backing to it. So it's not divorced from the scriptures, but actually incorporates it. And yes, some could come up with a message using scriptures to try to invalidate the Spirit of God. How's that sound to you? Using scriptures to invalidate the Spirit of God. But by let's know that all Scriptures are God-breathed. It involves the Spirit of God. In Acts 15, the first church council, if you will, when there was a dispute by some of the Pharisees who had become Christians, they were saying that Gentile men should get circumcised and keep the law. Peter got up and was saying, why put a yoke on them that we and our fathers couldn't keep? But by the end of it, James, Jesus' brother, he put out guidance. But he didn't just say, I, James, an apostle. It was in concert with the Holy Spirit. Jesus spoke about the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. He would serve many purposes. He wouldn't testify of himself, he would testify of Jesus, the Word. The Holy Spirit would convict us for sins, righteousness, judgment, and show us things to come. Do we think that because we have the scriptures today, that we don't need the Holy Spirit of God? On the day the scripture was, scriptures were canonized, did that mean the Holy Spirit of God could, in a sense, just go back to heaven and he had no business being here on the earth? because we have the scriptures. Some people may disagree with this message and others will agree because they have been in a position where they knew the word of God but they needed something from the spirit of God. They need a revelation about something. And it's not about like going after people regarding prophetic word, month, prophetic word, a year, some kind of divination or prophetic horoscope but something's going on where they need a revelation from the Lord King Saul when a demon was tormenting him 
some of his men knew that it was a spirit from God who was tormenting him and also what he should do for relief. It wasn't because he was searching the scriptures. In fact, prior to then, how many scriptures did he hear specifically referring to evil spirits and how they affect people? Yes. And even this part is kind of hard to believe. In Genesis 6, it speaks about some of the sons of God, angels, who left their place and took the daughters of men as wives. And sometimes we can look at the scripture and just overlook it, saying, well, that kind of stuff doesn't happen anymore. And those devils would be like, oh yeah, keep thinking that. So there's that instance of, in a sense, people contesting with spirits. Because the moment those angels did that, they started doing evil. In Genesis 3, the devil, an evil spirit, in the form of a serpent, seducing the woman to violate the word of God. And he said some things about their eyes would be opened, they'd be as God, knowing the difference between good and evil. His words were correct, was from the wrong spirit. For some, again, you will not agree with this message. And for others, you will agree. Because you know you've been through some things. Or you've seen others go through things. And they know the word of God. They have the word of God. And what they need is a revelation from the spirit of God. And some would say, the scriptures are sufficient. So is the Holy Spirit. We need both. We need both. Because there's so many biblical examples of people not relying solely on scripture, but also seeking the Spirit of God. In 1 Samuel 30, David, when he returned with his men to Ziklag, and the Amalekites had taken their families, did David search the scriptures? Or did he call for the priests with the ephod, the Urim and the Thummim, to consult with the Lord regarding what they should do? We still need such guidance today. Now, if you don't, <laughs> to me that's amazing. I know for me, I need things from the Spirit of God. Have I received revelations while reading or listening to the Bible? Yes, I have. Have I also received revelations when not reading the Bible? Yes, I have. To me, both were important. Because even the revelations I receive while reading the Bible, they must still be scriptural grounded. And arguably more so the things I receive from the Spirit of God. They too must be scriptural grounded. In Luke 4, when the devil tried tempting Jesus, he quoted from Psalm 91, so the devil also knows the word of God. But again, he did with the wrong spirit. In Luke 9, James and John want to call down fire in a Samaritan village, like Elijah did, as they said. It sounded scriptural, but the Lord told them they were of the wrong spirit. I know I've done messages like this before, this morning just hit me in a new way because there's something I need from the Lord and I need specifics. Something to this day I have not found in the scriptures and that's why we need the Spirit of God. And I even saw a friend who um, sent me a message asking me a question. What I do? I ask the Lord. Some things came to mind but it wasn't an answer to the question and I'll wait. In the book of Jeremiah, I think it's around 42 or 44, there's a time when people went to Jeremiah to inquire for the Lord. It took 10 days to get an answer. So there are times we simply have to wait on the Lord. And he's very judicious. 
about giveness revelations and then linking it to the scriptures, showing that in the kingdom of God, there is no division between the word and the spirit. But for us as Christians, some of us have that division and some people are suffering as a result of it. So again, for me, based on the personal experience this morning, I realize why prophecy, it is still needed, even though we have the scriptures. And there are a lot of prophets who actually wrote things down. In Jeremiah 26, King Jehoiakim saw the prophecies of Jeremiah. He used a scribe's knife to cut them up and toss into the fire. The Lord gave him even more to write. In the books of Kings and Chronicles, there are times at the end you see a king who passes away, goes onto the grave of their father, and you see that there is more written about them in the books of the prophets, such as Samuel the seer, Gad the seer, Edo the prophet. Same prophets played a role in writing the scriptures on a divine unction of the Holy Spirit. And then as is written in Revelation 11, the Lord is sent to witnesses and it specifies they'll be prophets. I've, I've never seen the word prophet being used to symbolize anything else but a person who prophesies on behalf of a deity. Because yes, they're false prophets. And by false prophets, I don't mean someone who just falsely prophesies in the name of the Lord. They're false prophets, like the false prophet, who will be touting the Antichrist, pointing people to him. They're false prophets like that. So a prophet is a spokesperson for a deity. And even though we have the scriptures now, in Revelation 11, the Lord will have his two witnesses, two prophets, who will prophesy for three and a half years. Why is it necessary to have two prophets speaking the word of the Lord, despite us having scriptures? That also brings up another thing. Everyone will not read the scriptures. And yes, there are some people, they are not believers in Christ Jesus, but they'll say things that are the words of the Lord without even knowing it. They may tell you, oh, judge not lest ye be judged. And they don't even know they're quoting Jesus. But they also don't know the rest of it. So everyone is not going to have their head in the Bible studying the scriptures. So people are going to be getting direct revelations from two prophets, as is prophesied in Revelation 11. Prophecy, ladies and gentlemen, it is not dead. It is still needed. And there are people who are going through things that they need a direct revelation from the Lord regarding what it is and what they must do. Sometimes what they're going through are trying times and they need a revelation for deliverance. Other times maybe something good and they need guidance from the Lord regarding what they should do. Mary, when she found out that she was going to be the mother of the Messiah, yes, Isaiah prophesied about a virgin giving birth. He didn't specify it was going to be Mary. But the Lord sent the angel, Gabriel, to let her know. Six months prior, Gabriel had spoken with Zacharias who was in a temple paying tribute to the Lord. And he told him that he was going to give birth to John, who we now call John the Baptist. Yes, in the book of Malachi, it speaks about one who paved the way for the Lord. So yes, there are scriptures, but there are also direct revelations from the Lord that people could use as a way to know what they ought to do whether something good or bad. Sometimes the message is one of repentance. Other times it's the Lord's getting rid of the quote unquote bless your socks off. But even what to do with the blessings. 
relationship advice in Matthew 1. Joseph was going to put Mary away because he found out that she was pregnant. His betrothed. She was pregnant and they had never been intimate. But an angel of the Lord told him to not be afraid to take Mary as his wife because the child she's carrying is of the Holy Spirit and that he should call the child Jesus. A revelation from the Lord. It wasn't because Joseph was searching the scriptures. And also Matthew 2. The wise men receive revelation from the Lord to not go back to King Herod because he sought to kill the child. Joseph received revelation in the middle of the night to get up and take the child with him into Egypt, also fulfilling prophecy. Joseph received additional revelation from the angel of the Lord regarding when to bring the child back into Israel. Even Judges 13, an angel spoke to the woman who would be Samson's mother, even given a revelation regarding the things Samson should or should not do to fulfill his, his covenant, his calling with the Lord. So yes, we need scriptures, but I submit to you that sometimes, of course not just sometimes, all the times we need the Spirit of God. Because we too, in this age, can fall into the trap of teaching the precepts and the doctrines of men as it is the Word of God. One of the ways we get into error is because someone taught us the wrong thing. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Truth. He doesn't teach us wrong. There are times when Pharisees and scribes, the Sadducees, they thought they were justified. Jesus in Matthew 23 said they were children of hell. It seems as if they had it right, but the Lord let them know not so. He even said that they were trying to prevent people from going into heaven, which is a mark of the Antichrist. The Antichrist is not just against Christ. The Antichrist tried to put himself in the place of Christ. So we need the Spirit of God. He convicts us of our sins, righteousness and judgment and shows us things to come. One of the things the Holy Spirit will do is to let us know maybe something we've been taught that's been going on for generations. He will let us know that it's not so. He will use scriptures to back those things up. And isn't something Gabriel spoke to Zacharias while he was in the temple of the Lord about the birth of John the Baptist, the one who would pave the way for Jesus. It happened in a temple, but at the end of Luke, it speaks about John being raised in a wilderness. We need the word of God, but we also need the spirit of God. Hmm. Paul also wrote, about not being ignorant of the devil's devices, lest he gets an advantage of us. Does the Bible have a chapter saying these are the devil's devices? If the devil does this, then you do that? No. There are guidances along the way. For example, Jesus spoke about like some demons don't come out by praying and fasting. Does that mean prayer and fasting is going to work for every devil? These are reasons why, at least some of them, why we need the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Truth, to guide us into all truth. And not just simply having a word, but the Spirit of God. And maybe this will be the final thing. Why would Jesus say the Holy Spirit does not testify for himself? but he testifies of Jesus. Why would I be speaking about the 
Holy Spirit like this. Isn't that kind of like the Holy Spirit testify for himself? Even with me speaking, it points back to Jesus. Jesus did not ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit on the earth for him to come here and do certain things for a while and then his job is done. The Holy Spirit glorifies Jesus. When he operates the way he was sent here to do, he glorifies Jesus. Revelation 19.10 John was told, the apostle, that the testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. When the gifts of the Holy Spirit is prophecy. So whenever there is a prophetic utterance from the Holy Spirit, because as Peter wrote, yes, there is but no process of private interpretation, but also continued by saying, The men of God, of times old, I'm paraphrasing, they didn't prophesy based on their will, but they spoke as were moved by the Holy Spirit. They spoke as were moved by the Holy Spirit. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to be our comforter, to guide us into all truth. If you ever learn to ride a bike, a bicycle, by using a tricycle or a bicycle with training wheels, you had those training wheels on for a while, but once you had your balance, in a sense you could take the training wheels off and just have a, a bicycle. We have to be careful that we don't develop an attitude, a mentality, that the Holy Spirit, He's only training wheels. And once we get to a certain level, we can just take him off and we can just ride on our own. That opens the door for pride. So I don't know about you. I need the Bible. But I need the Holy Spirit too. So the way, there are three who will be record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And all three are one. May we as the body of Christ also be one, knowing that some of us are eyes, others are fingers, and others are some parts that usually get covered. But we all have a function. And let's be careful that we're not trying to cut our brothers and sisters off because of how they, they see things, how the Lord shows them things. And even by using scriptures, to justify those things. We need each other. And it's almost like it's a message that can't end because so far I've gone on much longer than I thought. There's a point Jesus spoke to the Father about glorifying his name. And there was a voice from heaven saying, I have glorified and will glorify it. Some of the people heard an angel. Others heard thunder. We have to be careful that if some of us are hearing an angel that we don't start trying to exalt ourselves above those who only heard thunder. And for those who heard a thunder, they don't start saying, since I heard thunder, it is impossible that you heard an angel. We're supposed to be the body of Christ, united on the one Lord one faith, one baptism, but also one spirit, who is the spirit of truth. He is not divorced from the word, and the war, word is not divorced from him. So may we walk through this journey here in life with the word of God and the spirit of God. Even Jesus in his ministry didn't start until the Holy Spirit descended upon him in a form for dove. Should we go through this life without 
the Holy Spirit. If you can, I won't. I pray this message blesses you. God bless you. And Jesus the Christ is Lord.